Alan and I met when I was a senior at Pepperdine and he was in graduate school. Uh, Alec and I started having breakfast together. Just gave me some advice, some mentoring. He calls me his mentor, but I think that's just to make me feel old. He ended up hiring me for my first job out of, out of college. Alan and Alec uh, were just riffing, hanging out one day. They came up with the idea of what if great uh, presidents had Twitter, what would they have tweeted? And, and that uh, snowballed into this larger idea of what if Twitter existed since the beginning of time. Which was really just an excuse to tell history jokes uh, using Twitter as a uh, as a handle, and then July Fourth weekend uh, kind of had the uh, the holy trifecta of viral gold. We happened to be going to his house for a Fourth of July, like get together with his family, and so and our wives both tell the story about how they're actually like interacting with people and talking to each other. And Alan and I are just in the corner hitting like refresh, 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 refresh. Time picked us up, and then CNN mentioned us as one of the like top funny sites you have to look at. And then Ashton Kutcher tweeted a link to an Abraham. Lincoln tweet which was anyone have a better way of saying 87 years. I started uh, contacting book agents immediately following that weekend and within a month had a book deal with uh, Random House. The blog was being seen. A VP of marketing at Nokia reached out to us. His creative agency, um, he asked them uh, to um, create some Nokia-themed historical tweets. And we said, great, that's awesome. We love it when people rip off our stuff. Uh, you owe us dinner. <laughs> Which turned into uh, our first client. And suddenly we were off and rolling. We needed a name to sign the paperwork to get paid by our first client. And so we asked our wives what we should call the company. And they both uh, separately said McBeard. I was an intern for Alan still, about to graduate. Uh, he, he said like, so like, what's your plan after, uh, after graduation? Uh, plan on working for you. And he said like, I don't have a company really yet, but if, uh, if you're down to go for this ride, this is a startup mentality, then I'm happy to, uh, to have you join us. When I started talking with Alec and he started saying, you know, hey, we're doing this startup up. There's only a couple of us right now. We know you don't have experience in social media, but we know that you're a good culture fit. And so for me, that was the biggest thing of saying, all right, if they're more concerned about being a culture fit and they're more concerned about having similar values, I'm in, you know, I'm, I'm sold. You know, when I talk about hiring great people and creating a culture with those people, it's, I'm thinking about people like Darnell and people like Kaylee. As we figured out company culture, I think there was a lot of things that were ingrained in us through our time at Pepperdine. We focus on what we call aggressive self-starters. We knew from the very beginning that we were going to be remote. There needed to be something that, uh, that bound us together, some sort of common thread that we had together. One of the things that I was remembering about my very first day was how uh, similar it was to my first day at Pepperdine. When you roll up and all of the orientation counselors come and they welcome you out of your car and it's so exciting and it just really made me feel like this is the place for me, I can grow. Our first project outside of Nokia was a, a 2010 movie, Vampire Suck. The whole movie movie leaked online three days before the first trailer. And social media wasn't a big part of the marketing mix yet. They essentially said, here's the movie, here's your budget, uh, we'll see you guys in four months. And let us do whatever we wanted. And uh, that allowed us to really experiment and just kind of try out what we thought might work, what we thought might resonate with people. And we exceeded their goals, uh, their benchmark for us uh, by 10x. So 2014, we were about five, six years in, and we had grown to about 60, 70 people, um, which to us was bigger than we ever thought we'd get. And so Alan and I got together and we said, okay, if we're gonna be acquired in the future, and that's a distinct possibility, um, who would we be open to? And Fullscreen was one of the top names on that list. Um, we did nothing with that, we didn't reach out to anyone, we just kind of put that in the back of our minds and mentally prepared. Not two, three months later, but we got a call from someone that was representing a potential acquirer. We brought McBeard into full screen because we believe that we saw the world the same way. So we had been assured that the deal was going to you know, kind of be locked in by a certain date. And so we planned an all-team day to get everybody in the company together because we all work remotely. There was one sticking point that we didn't like and that our lawyers didn't like and that full screen didn't like that we were still wrestling with that day. And so we didn't announce in the morning because we thought that like this may not happen. 
but for us to fulfill the promise that we made to our employees, which is that if you give us your best, we will make sure that you have the best opportunities available to you. We had to be in a place that had unlimited scale and possibilities. And so finally by 4 p.m. that day, we said, hey, gather everyone together because we got an announcement to make. It's kind of that moment of, of almost like it felt like your single parent was like, hey, I met someone and we're getting married and it's all gonna be great, you're gonna love them, but you don't really know them yet and this is gonna change everything and you're gonna have like new siblings. But it's like, trust us and we're like, yeah, okay, we trust you. Full Screen as a company really believed in the McBeard mission and wanted to retain as much of the McBeard spirit and as much of the McBeard um, you know, mission and purpose as they could. We've almost doubled since we were acquired, uh, and so that keeps going. I'm really happy for, for McBeard employees that they have all the opportunities that they have now that they wouldn't have had if we had stayed smaller. As of this week, I think we're up and over 230 people. To be established to the point where this whole thing is so big and clients are so happy with the work we're doing, it's, it's really inspiring. You know, a big thing that I remember from my time at Pepperdine was not only the opportunity to um, be a leader and to really practice that and to lean into what that looks like, um, but also just to work with a lot of different types of people. Um, that that experience, you know, in my sorority at Pepperdine, going abroad, all of those things helped me become a better leader and sort of sharpen my skills. I was really involved as a student. Um, everything from student government to going overseas to PAC to Greek life. Those opportunities to lead really set me on a great trajectory. Social is becoming so important now. Um, we made we made it a great bet early on, um, but I think there are some intangibles that I don't think people are going to be able to compete with. We were really intentional about the thing we wanted to build and the people we wanted to hire and be around and uh, the type of people we wanted uh, our clients to say we were. We have such a shared history and such a shared um, love for the school that we went to and the community that um, we are able to carry over from Pepperdine and I think that mostly we have a shared value system. My favorite part about working with McBeard is the people and the creativity and the innovation they bring to every single day is really inspiring. When people think about the advertising industry, a lot of people think about cutthroat, it's really mean and people I think sometimes are surprised by McBeard's culture. I obviously will be a little biased but I think that has a lot to do with the fact that there is a large population of the Pepperdine graduates that helped to lay down a foundation for McBeard's culture. McBeard has changed so much since I've been here. Now we're here at full screen as a full screen company and taking on so many projects that I never thought I'd have an opportunity to work on. It's really hard to say where the future of McBeard will be. I know the future of McBeard is strong so we will be wherever social will be. The best type of content will always win out and I think at McBeard and at full screen we do make the best type of content. We have so much potential. I mean, we have such, such talented individuals working here. It's really a guessing game. I mean, I think that the sky's the limit with the people that we have and the ideas that come out of conversations. So, I don't know, magic? <laughs>